uh, just a little bit of background about me before I start to give an overview of what we do at Crowd Helix. So um, I was previously, uh, in my previous role, I was head of European research and innovation at University College London. Um, and around about seven or eight years ago, uh, when I was in this position, we could see that there was a change in landscape for European funding. And that when you looked at all of the collaborative networks that were being funded by the EU uh, for going forward, it appeared that there was going to be a change in the types of projects and networks that the EU are going to fund, and that there was going to be much more focus on higher levels of technology readiness, uh, more focus on innovation, more focus on impact, exploitation of work, and the Commission were less interested in funding networks that would be focused on um, early stage research. So when we looked around to see the types of networks that we had at UCL that enabled us to connect from a university with businesses to do higher level TRLs uh, projects, uh, we didn't really have uh, any international networks that enabled us to do this. We had lots of networks in and around London, around the ecosystem of the university itself. But when it came to international collaboration that would link uh, one sector to another, one discipline to another over different regions, we uh, we didn't have anything in place uh, really to, to kind of form new relationships around this in a, st in a structured way. So what we did back then was uh, we created Crowd Helix um, and Crowd Helix is now um, fast tracking to, to today, to the present. Uh, we have nearly 500 member organizations um, in nearly 40, in 45 different countries. Uh, we've created a lot of new networks and partnerships um, to between universities and businesses. And what I'm gonna hopefully do today is to give you a snapshot of what we're doing um, at the moment and how we may be able to help uh, you and your stakeholders in Taiwan hopefully connect with organizations uh, in Europe to, uh, to target this level, this type of funding. So, just some high level uh, snapshot stats um, since launching Crowd Helix. Uh, on the right hand side here, you'll see you know, the numbers of collaborations, uh, collaborators that we have on the platform. So it's fast approaching 5,000 people. Uh, it's fast approaching 500 organizations and, and 46 different countries. And since we started to build out the network, our focus uh, initially has been on European engagement. So most of our members are from the European Union or associated countries. And our next phase of development is really to go global with the platform and with the network. And that's one of the main reasons why I'm speaking to you here today to kind of um, open uh, that offer, extend that offer to you and your stakeholders to see if you would be interested in participating in, in what we do at Crowd Helix. Um, here's a snapshot of our of our universities. So this is basically the the spine of our network, what we call the RTO uh, membership base. We have nearly a hundred members, RTO members, from all over the from all over Europe, and uh, we also have um, around about twenty uh, multinational international corporations as well as members. And here uh, we have around about four hundred uh, small to medium sized enterprises. Now it's important to note that our business model as a as a network and a platform is subscription based model. So all of our pretty much most of our members who are uh, participating in Crowd Helix activities uh, pay us a subscription fee to access the network and the platform. Uh, one of my offers here today to you and your organisations is, uh, is 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 effectively a free offer. Um, what I would like to do is to see if if following today's event or in the future, if any of you or your stakeholders are interested in learning more about what we do at Crowd Helix, um, how you may be able to get access um, to, to our networks and onto the platform, then we, I'd be very happy to give you um, a, a free membership offer really. And this is really our commitment to um, extending um, our reach to um, organizations in regions that we have, have yet to really tap into. And we very much see Taiwan as being one of those areas. So uh, yes, we're a membership organization. Yes, most organizations have to pay a subscription fee, uh, normally several thousand euros per year. Um, but for, for your organizations at the moment, we would be happy to waive that fee in order to demonstrate the value that we can uh, can provide. Um, and then hopefully after that, if we, if we can 
uh, do our job properly and provide value, perhaps your organization will be able to fully join the organization in the, in the future. So uh, just some high level stats about what we do as a network. So uh, we've been around now for six years. Um, our membership um, has secured uh, just over uh, just under 10 percent of the Horizon 2020 budget. Uh, collectively, this is this is a moving uh, statistic uh, on a daily basis, but our members have won somewhere between five and six billion euros of funding from Horizon 2020. And why is this important uh, to you? It's important in, in our view because it demonstrates the quality of the organisation to our members of Crowd Helix. It shows this, this obviously quite high number, six, five to six billion euros is a lot of funding, but it shows that our members are active and engaged in in this uh, and, and winning uh, funding uh, from, from these uh, streams. So here is just a map, just to give you a, a, a it's a bit, it's a little bit busy, but it's just to give you a snapshot of uh, the composition of um, and the location of most of our members. Uh, we have some uh, beyond this map, so we have some members now in uh, South America, for example. But as you'll see here, from the, looking at the stars and the circles, which represent different types of organisations, you can see that the, the vast majority of our membership base is, is actually in the European Union. Um, what we would like to do is to uh, have more stars and circles in regions that we are um, underrepresented in. And I'd very much like, as an output of today, to hopefully see uh, maybe some of those uh, stars and circles be, to be represented in Taiwan um, uh, on our map next year. So um, why uh, why is it important for, for you to maybe consider um, getting access to, to Crowd Helix. So from our side, um, what we've got at the moment is the next framework program uh, will be starting, uh, funded by the European Union in next year, so January uh, next month. And this will run for seven years, as I'm sure many of you already know. The budget for this has already been approved and it's around about 95 billion euros of funding. Uh, and around about two thirds of that funding is dedicated to international collaboration. And what the Commission are really, European Commission are really trying to encourage and promote is global international uh, collaboration on, uh, on the basis of, of excellence. So we're really now trying to reach out to organizations and regions outside of the European Union and, and those non-associated countries and um, we really would like to gain more um, representation from third countries like uh, from those based in Taiwan. Uh, what we do is we profile organizations and people within their organizations and then we basically link them together to do collaboration and I'll talk to you a little bit about that in a moment. Um, here are some examples uh, or some, of some success stories where we've helped uh, some of our members uh, actually connecting them to, to new networks that are emerging and those networks have then led to proposals and those proposals have subsequently been funded. Um, I'd also uh, encourage you to go to our website. Um, on the dashboard on our website, there's a tab called success. And on that, you'll see a whole list of uh, success stories which have proven that what we do at Crowd Helix uh, works. Uh, we don't have a huge amount of success stories for third country participation, mainly because our primarily our, our membership base is primarily uh, EU based. Uh, but we're looking, as I said, I've already said, look, we're looking for this to hopefully change in the, in the not too distant future um, as we focus on more engagement from these regions. But I've just taken a snapshot here of one example um, of a recently uh, funded project where Crowd Helix has connected to an organization uh, in Brazil obviously a third country and that and that organization um, joined a network which uh, uh, was then part of a project and that project was then subsequently funded. Uh, so it would be amazing next year and a year after if we had some examples like this but for Taiwan organizations, Taiwanese organizations and Taiwanese researchers. Uh, so if you think this is something that would be of interest uh, to you and you want to get invo more involved in European funded projects then please feel free to, to reach out. Um, just before I sort of finish um, what I'm talking about here on Crowd Helix, I just want to talk about actually practically how it works. So uh, we are a network uh, of organizations that are interested in doing research and innovation. We have about 500 member organizations from, from all over Europe. Practically speaking, we are, we are structured around uh, virtual clusters, which we call helixes. Uh, here you will see most of our helixes that are live at the moment in all sorts of uh, thematic areas. Uh, so transport to healthy cities to COVID-19. 
And then what we then do is we profile organizations and people within those organizations who have um, an interest and a capability in those, in, in those areas. And then we bring together prospective coordinators that are looking to build teams to, to, um, to address these global challenges through innovation projects funded by the EU. And then what we do is when speaking to the coordinators, we try to identify what their needs are what the commission will be looking for in terms of what the call is, is saying and what the expected impacts are. And then we try to, to really find the very best partners for them on a global scale to hopefully join that team uh, in order to, to create the magic recipe for, for success in this area. Uh, this is an example of one Helix page, which is materials. This is uh, led uh, by a Spanish, uh, a leading uh, Spanish uh, research center called LATAT. They're very active in European funding. They're one of our, our, our sponsors and our leaders of the material Helix. And uh, added to the uh, Helixes that we that we have, we we run events to bring people and teams together. So to kind of, to build networks to uh, in response to these forthcoming uh, calls that are funded by the European Union. And here is an example here of some of the events that we've hosted uh, uh, recently. Uh, we had an event about uh, six weeks ago on the European Green Deal, which is a big one billion euro uh, program to f uh, to fund Green Deal initiatives initiated by the European Commission. And next year, we will have probably around about 10 to 12 events. Each of these events will be focused on forthcoming calls uh, to be funded by the European Union. And uh, if you or your organizations are interested in these events, you can attend. You don't have to do this physically. We do brokeraging virtually as well. And if this is something that will be of interest to you and you have certain areas that uh, you would like to flag as, as a priority for you or your organization, then please feel free to get in contact. I'll be very happy to see how we may be able to help uh, invite you to these events and see how we can help you to potentially profile yourself to prospective coordinators. Um, so these, is, these six boxes are really the, uh, the main funding pots for collaborative research funded by the European Union's next uh, program, which starts in January. Uh, here you'll see the way that the funding is very multidisciplinary. The commission, these projects, when they get funded, you're talking, we're talking about five to 10 million euros, uh, typically in size. Uh, they want to, the European Union want to see projects that will do excellent research, but then also turning that research into innovation and then that innovation having an impact. And uh, what you find is you have different disciplines that are uh, are required in order to get the magic ingredients needed to be successful. And you need different sectors as well. So, you know, small businesses, big businesses, um, research centers, and they're all addressing um, these, these, these sort of global and societal challenges. Um, when an organization participates uh, in Crowd Helix and they join, it's not just that we we say, okay, you can profile your organization and people within your organization. In addition to that, we will allocate an account manager to work with you to identify what your needs are and who will be basically representing your needs across the network. So if we see calls that are being developed uh, from some of our member organizations, we will then try to um, introduce you to those uh, to those emerging networks. So um, this is a, an overview of our team. Uh, we're based in London and um, in, in Portugal as well and in Ireland. Uh, we have a, a technology arm to, uh, to the business and we also have a network-based arm. Uh, as I said, we're a fairly new uh, emerging company. Uh, I think by the end of next year, we'll probably have around about 20 people in the team. One of our, our key uh, priorities for next year and beyond is really to get participation from organizations that we have yet to kind of get much uh, um, activity in. And we would really value and welcome the opportunity to, to showcase what we can do to Taiwanese or researchers and innovators. And if any of you have any um, questions or would like to uh, get in contact with me, or at least maybe if you want me to, to show a demo of what we do and to dig a bit deeper into the successes, then I'm very happy to do that. So I'd like to thank you once again for your time. Uh, really uh, appreciate this and the invite. And should anyone have any follow-up questions from today, uh, please feel free to get in contact with me. My, my email details are here, michael at crowdhelix.com. And then you can uh, just type in crowdhelix.com and you can find out more information on what we do and, and what we're offering uh, that way. So thanks again. Have a good day and uh, best wishes. Bye.